for, thanks for joining us here on France 24. You knew Milan Kundera very well. You were with him just uh, a week ago. That's right. And uh, it's a sad day uh, for not just his friends, uh, but it's a sad day, I think, for those who were attached to his uh, literary genius and to his thinking about Europe. You know, he, so I think this is a great legacy of this man, uh, both as a novelist and as a thinker. And uh, the two complemented each other. He talked about the novel as being the art form where you can't cheat because it's so intimate. Uh, and it was his intimate writing uh, that, again, broke through the Iron Curtain. Uh, that's right. He, he, uh, he made this distinction between poetry, the lyrical art. You can write wonderful verses, but... Uh, uh, they don't have to be true, <laughs> uh, whereas the novel is the art of truth. You cannot, you cannot produce uh, a novel based on complete nonsense. That was his, uh, his, uh, his view of, uh, of the novel, which I think uh, you had mentioned in your introduction, The Unbearable Lightness of Being. This is probably the book that is best known around the world. For me, the best or the, mo the one that I feel most attached to is The Joke, the novel he published in France in 68, but in Prague the year before. And in that novel, he basically makes a portrait of the country in the whole post-war era, as seen by the four, four different characters. Each of them has a different version of that story. And that's, I think, why he's a great writer. He's not the narrator with a message telling you, this is what you have to think about this. But he shows the complexities, the ironies, of course, of, of history and, and their tragic moments, too. So uh, that is Kundera, the novelist. Yeah, and, 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 then, and, and, course, and he, 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 just a word on the joke, because it's in 1967, so this is before the Prague Spring, and it, he pulls no punches in that book. That's right. I mean, he uh, the novel starts with a postcard that uh, uh, a young man sends to his girlfriend, who is a very enthusiastic communist, and he writes, you know, uh, 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 the optimism is the opium of the people, um, um, uh, long live Trotsky, and it's supposed to be—it's a kind of joke, and it's—and and, and he he sends it off. Of course, she, as a dutiful communist, you know, shows it immediately to her superiors, and and the whole machinery starts working. He gets kicked out from the university. He becomes a non person, etc. And the whole book is about the revenge he wants to take on the person that. Uh, expelled him uh, from the university then. And of course, being Kundera, it's a revenge that falls flat on its face. I will not describe any more, but I invite your viewers to read the joke. Great, great novel. But I think that what is important about Kundera is not just his novels, it's his essays. He's thinking about Europe. He's a great European. and since he lived both and wrote Czechoslovakia, he wrote in Czech, and then he has his life in France, and he did something very daring. He shifted to French. And, uh, and he wrote novelist, beautifully in French. This, sorry? And he wrote beautifully in French. And he wrote very well in French. So this is, so he's a bridge between the two Europes, and he, is really famous for an essay he wrote in 1983, and which is called The Tragedy of Central Europe or The Kidnapped West. What he meant by that, he, he says that the, in his essay, is Central Europe is culturally Western, politically East, and geographically in the center. This is the tragedy of Central Europe. It is sort of torn apart between belonging to the Soviet fold and culturally being Western. And uh, uh, you could say that 1989 is a way 
for Central Europe to reconcile its culture, its politics, and its geography. Uh, so th th that was an essay which, uh, incidentally, was republished now uh, and has had 20 translations in one year. So you have, an, uh, you have an author who wrote something 40 years ago. It was not republished since. It's published now, translated in 20 languages. And you might have to ask yourself why. Two reasons. One is what he describes about Central Europe, the tragedy of small nations whose existence is not guaranteed. So they survive through the richness of their culture, to their contribution to European culture. Why is this interesting today? Because this, what he was writing about Czechoslovakia, to Hungary, the plight, to, Hungary to others, uh, uh, it applies to Ukraine today. Because the question of a small nation is not a question of size, the number of its inhabitants, but the idea that it is a nation whose existence is not self-evident, is not guaranteed. That is the shared predicament of Ukraine today and the nations of Central Europe before. So this is, I think, a, a, a very interesting insight. And the second insight concerns Russia, because for him, Russia is the constitutive other uh, uh, for Central Europe. It's a, he, he says it's a different civilization. So uh, uh, he doesn't say it's superior, inferior. He says it's, it's another civilization, but which happens to be threatening for the nations of Central Europe. Well, again, I think what he has to say about Russia is very relevant for today, and it explains why the essay is retranslated, republished all over Europe today and beyond. I mean, the latest news is it's translated in Thailand, in Korea, in Brazil, et cetera, et cetera. So this is an author who can write about Europe, change the mental geography of Europeans through his writings, through his essays, and, and become uh, read worldwide and appreciated as a great European worldwide. So. A French, Czech, yeah, that's something that speaks to somebody like me. But beyond that, a great European. Jacques Rupnik, uh, uh, he spoke to you. He didn't speak much to journalists. Uh, so is there one anecdote in particular? Uh, there's a man who moved to Paris in the 1970s. One crucial moment during that arc of history you've just described uh, where you bumped into Milan Kundera, where you exchanged with him. Well, you know, the, the exchanges is, uh, were multiple, but the, I think what, 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 what I recall from, from all of them is his ironic uh, detachment. You know, he would, he would probe, uh, he would try a subject and let you develop it. And once you discover that you've gone perhaps too far in your argument, he would have a little smile. And uh, yeah, he knew where he wanted to get you in your argument. And I think that that's, uh, that's uh, of course, it's his very playful uh, uh, approach to human relations and to ideas, you know. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, yeah, so that, that I think is, and of course, uh, uh, I think a great moment uh, uh, for him uh, was his, uh, uh, the moment he lost his Czechoslovak citizenship. He, he was deprived of it by the regime and soon after that adopted French. And you know, for many people, including Kundera, exile is a difficult thing. People think exile, oh, you just go and uh, you, you, are, you become successful and, and you are, you know, you escape the, the harshness of the, of the communist regime in Czechoslovakia. Well, exile can be very difficult. Yet, he would consider exile also as something liberating. Uh, and in the end, he got, he got not, that citizenship, uh, that uh, Czech citizenship uh, uh, back after, the, of course, uh, uh, the, the, the fall of the Berlin Wall. I want to thank you so much for, for sharing those insights and those moments uh, with us, Jacques Rupnik. My pleasure.